So I um I wanted to start our kazoom with this chant that I just wrote. Uh, and I wrote this because... This is the first time I've heard it. <laughs> I wrote this because in the inauguration, I was very moved by the, the benediction by Reverend Sylvester Beam, Beamer. Beamer? Beecham. Beamer. Beecham. Uh, and uh, in it, he quoted um, First Kings um, and uh, chapter 3, verse 12. And I uh, had a session with someone this morning who, who pointed it out to me, and I looked at it, and it just was so uh, kind of warming my heart and maybe a, a way to celebrate this moment. And in it, uh, it's, a, it's about King Solomon, which is the place in us that is sovereign, that is... Uh, that is connected to our oneness. And it says, it says, he ne natati lach, here, you know, behold, I give you um, a wise and understanding heart. And it's the, it's the prayer that we want to give to our leaders and also <coughs> to ourselves. Uh, that 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 we are guided by that wise and understanding heart. So, so let's chant that a few more minutes uh, to really tune into the blessing of the moment and open our hearts to that possibility. Wise and understanding heart. Wise and understanding heart. Understanding yeah. heart. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, 
Finding in that heart the wisdom, understanding that is, is built into the heart that needs to be uncovered. It's there. And there is each of us has a, a heart, and then there's the one the one heart that we share. So I, it's a it's a wonderful source of chance for me to listen to Christian preachers <laughs> because they'll point something out that I might have missed and uh, and then I'll run to my to my to my Hebrew and say oh what is that and uh, and then uh, really you know it can can be it can be given to me through that so. Uh, so that was a wonderful, wonderful gift, and uh, and a kind of a way, you know, to hold the moment of the inauguration, which um, can uh, it can kind of fade. You know, the the sparkle of it can kind of fade away. So you know, to put it into to the energy of it into a chant helps us to keep our. Uh, keep our faith, keep our hope, keep our, you know, a sense of the miraculousness of the moment alive in us. Imprinted in my yeah, brain and yeah, body. Yeah, that's what the, the chant. That's what the chant does. Yeah. And uh, it'll be on, it'll be on my website in a few days. So, uh, so, um, so welcome again. This is the week of the foxes. And I've really been enjoying the foxes this week. Um, the Song of Songs says, uh, gives us some meditation instruction and instruction for life. Um, you know how when you're learning Buddhist meditation, they talk about the monkey, the monkey mind, um, just of like the nature of mind to sort of jump, jump around and be easily distracted and, you know, and bring you down the wrong path and and in the Song of Songs, I realized that the language of the Song of Songs says, catch us the foxes, the little foxes that raid our vineyard, just, just when the when vines, vines are, are in bloom. bloom. I was just getting ready. <laughs> and, um, you know, and I, in my commentary, I say that if the, the vineyard is the place of our love, and the place where the power of prophecy is cultivated, then those pesky foxes, our, well, this is for, it was for me, the doubts that creep into the mind just when I'm opening up to some new insight or realization. If I catch myself uh, right at the moment when it's that doubt is beginning to take hold, I can release the thoughts and return to nurture the fragile blossoming of wisdom. So, um, catching the foxes means being coming into an awareness of how our minds work and how they uh, how they spin, really, you know. And and our practice, which is um, essential to the practice of cultivating presence. Um, it, what is absolutely necessary in cultivating presence is learning how we we lose presence. I said, Andy, you did you raise your <laughs> hand? <laughs> Sorry, that was a mistake. I didn't want to interrupt, but I noticed that Lillian Hellman got her play from that name. I'm from sorry. Which, I, from which name? Lillian Hellman wrote the play Little Foxes. Oh, oh okay. right. <laughs> okay. Forgot Sorry to interrupt, though. <laughs> I wouldn't have done that. <laughs> right. That's okay. That's good. So those little, those, yeah. 
those little foxes, you know, it's the awareness of those little foxes of how our minds work. And all of what those foxes do is take us out of the present mm. moment mm -hmm. and into our thoughts uh, about it or our doubts, our worries, our cynicism, our all, all kinds of things that can take us down the wrong road. And uh, I wanted to just as, as an inspiration for catching those little foxes, um, I wanted to read to you this one little paragraph from this uh, book that I, uh, I told you about by Solomon Katz called the Beauty as a State of Being. And this is the very beginning of the book. And he's a, he's a psychologist and he, he works um, in a practice uh, with, you know, with, with somebody else. And, and he, was, he says, recently I was talking about a patient that I was seeing and his partner asked, well, what's, uh, what's his diagnosis? And he says, I, I was inclined to answer, he has the same diagnosis as everyone else that I see. He has a mind. <laughs> or he could have elaborated, he takes his thoughts seriously. He is embedded in his thoughts. He believes the conversation going on in his head is significant. This is his and everyone's diagnosis. Clinical diagnoses like anxiety or depression describe different patterns of mind, different ways the mind may spin or the therapeutic focus might involve self-esteem, self-image, or self-doubt, are the ways that, ways that the mind spin. The mind spins in many ways, and its different preoccupations create different emotional disturbances. But the bottom line, the universal diagnosis is always, he or she has a mind and it is spinning. <laughs> So I think of that, anyway. that spinning mind is, uh, it's true. is, is a description of those, uh, those foxes that are loose in the mind. And uh, so the practice that I've been doing with this catch us the foxes uh, <clears throat> is actually the building <laughs> of my resolve, you know, because when I go, uh, you know, th those foxes are, they're so compelling. They're so seductive. They pull me away so easily. But when I build inside me a resolve to stay present in this very moment in order to receive the gift that God is giving me, uh, then I'm, I'm a little, you know, sort of, I'm ready. I'm ready for when those foxes begin. I can, uh, I can say, oh, I know you. <laughs> And I don't have to be a victim of the spinning of the mind, um, which is such a wonderful uh, tool to have. And this, because the spinning of the mind can really bring such suffering and, and, oh, yeah. and, and havoc. And um, I've, I'm, I'm, the training of the mind is to notice if you have a thought, did, that, did you just think that thought a couple seconds ago? Did, is it repeating? Is it a repeating thought? Is it on a loop? And if it is, there's a way to release that thought and return to the gift of this present moment. So in cultivating presence, I want to learn about how the mind works so that I can, don't, don't become a victim of it and instead I can use it in creative, imaginative, wonderful ways. So, um, so let us mm -hmm. take, uh, use this practice again to build the resolve, to, uh, to find in us this kind of a commitment to presence that won't, uh, you know, allow us to be pulled off by the spinning minds. Eh, <laughs> 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 
שועלים, קטנים, מחבלים, כדמים, מחרמנו, סמדרת הזו ענו, שועלים, הזו ענו, שועלים, שועלים, קטנים, מחבלים, כדמים, מחרמנו, סמדרת הזו ענו, שועלים. שועלים <laughs> שועלים, 
שועלים קטנים, מחבלים כרמים, וכרמינו זמנו הכזו לנו Breathe into the resolve. That resolve, that commitment to stay present. Opening up to the expanse, to the power of this moment. So when we are in the flow of life, when we are caught up in the, in, you know, in the magic and the miracle and the goodness of our lives, uh, we become receptive. And um, sometimes what I, what I notice is that, is that I notice a lot more of synchronicities in my life, you know, when I'm in that state of presence. Because the synchronicities, I think they're always there, but I don't always, I don't always notice them. And, but when I'm present, I notice the, mm -hmm. the miracle of things. And, yeah. uh, and <clears throat> it is uh, that, that place of presence can almost feel vulnerable, you know, because I use all of those um, you know, those foxes are, are kind of like devices that I use to try to be safe. You know, if I can figure out what's going to happen next, then you know, maybe I'll be safe. It actually is not a strategy that works, but it's the only one I got. So <laughs> I might keep using it, you know. And, and uh, so that vulnerability of the present moment is to receive all of it. And sometimes it's both, you know, both the beauty and the pain of it, but to receive it all and to come into full aliveness. And uh, so I, uh, I want to bring this practice of Shehechiana, which is, I think, such a core Jewish practice. It's the practice of blessing this moment. And it is embodied, <coughs> it is the realization that my whole life has led me to this moment that everything that I have done has prepared me for this moment. And I better pay, I better pay attention. And, uh, you know, when, when, I, when I created this practice, it was out of the realization that if I was awake and attentive, I could say that Shekhiyanu every single moment, and every single moment is new. And... Uh, and so, uh, it, you know, these words, I think, are, are important to get inside us so that we can receive the, the gift of our lives. And the gift of this, you know, I, I'm thinking about this country that I live in, the, the Shehechiano moment of this, of reaching this moment um, when mm. there was mm. so much trepidation that it might not come. <laughs> it might not happen, yeah. And... Uh, and did, so there's a, kind of this wonderful <laughs> sigh of relief, but also, um, and I want I, what I want to do uh, tonight is really open to the <coughs> the gift of this moment, because our you know our minds you know also to protect ourselves um, really can make up lots of things of like uh, yeah but yeah buts you know it's and. Uh, 
and we could take away from the joy of it. And I want to, uh, I want to open to it fully. So the English and the English words has a, a couple of different names of God that that uh, that are important to me. One is is to call to say, "Oh mystery," and. Uh, Oh, mystery, grace unfolding. Another name of God, oh, miracle. Mm. It's you alone. Oh, mystery, grace unfold, unfolding. Oh, miracle, who brings us home. And that is the vineyard. That's the vineyard. That's, that, that's the place of, of power, of prophecy, of love. That is our home. Even though we get pulled out you know, or the foxes come and distract us, right? right. Yeah. Uh, but we keep coming home, and every time we come <clears throat> home, we establish a, a stronger pathway home. Uh, and so, the new, you know, an opening to the new, the newness, the novelty of this moment wakes us up. Because when we have that kind of sense of same old, same old. Some parts of us go to sleep, and we want to um, completely awaken to what's here, and you know what I might even be missing of this moment. Uh, and this moment is in process; it is grace unfolding. So let's let's really, <coughs> all of us together, step in to the mystery and miracle of this moment. And um, allow it to allow the the grace of it to to unfold. the <laughs>
grace unfolding. as if the divine presence is waiting to, to welcome us home. And yet, those foxes, <laughs> they're very active. They're very, very smart, smart as a fox, mischievous, very cunning, very cunning. <laughs> and I, I wondered if, you know, when you're in that place of complete presence, home place, you know, um, what is it that pulls you out of it? And that may be right in the chat, if you like, just, um, what do you, what's the name, what are the names of some of your foxes? You know, I mentioned that one of my foxes was was doubt or worry? What's your, what kind of foxes do you deal with that maybe pull you out of that place of, of, of home? When I get scared, it pulls me right out. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we are. <laughs> okay, fear, uncertainty, is this real? Worry, worry, judgment, judgment, anxiety, fear, the sense of not enoughness, unworthiness, busyness, fear, judgment, doubt, fear, worry, fear of the future, planning, next task, people pleasing, obsession, shame, shame. frustration, feeling behind, not feeling good enough, not good enough, not doing enough, mm -hmm. most need to do lists, fear of missing out on something, addictive watching the news, thinking my to-do list is larger than life itself. <laughs> my God, I could say yeah. yes to all of these. <laughs> fear, Holy moly. Rejection, <laughs> fear of missing out, right? overwhelmed doubt, doing it right, memory, lack of faith in others, not doing enough, overwhelmed. 10,000 things causing a ruckus. Ruck. I, I call that a ruckus. A, ruckus. <laughs> a Jewish ruckus is a ruckus. ruckus. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking about things that I can control, thinking I should be doing something else, a loser, distraction, busyness, pain, oi! <laughs> Physical pain, anxiety about having to prepare and do the, the <laughs> rooster crowing in the back, regret. Okay. We got lots of wonderful roost. Oh, and the rooster scared of the foxes. Good. So, so what you know, no, sort of, sort of understanding your foxes, maybe you know, sometimes can help of like catching them quicker, a little bit, a little sooner before they before they kind of do a lot of damage and um, and take you out of the this possibility of receiving this the gift of this moment. Um, so I wanted to do an, uh, a couple other practices that might help us to build uh, build that intention of being in the in the present moment. And this one is called my uh, my protection. 
And it says, my, <coughs> my protection, Magini, it's my protection, it's like my shield, right? Magini, Al Elohim, it's all about the God field. My protection is all about the God field. Mm -hmm. And the God, what I mean by God field is that we can either fill our field with our own ego, which is really made up of all of those fear places, you know, or we can fill it with God. We can fill it with a mystery. And uh, there is a place at the center of the heart that is the source of that God energy. And what I want to do is to connect with that deep place inside my heart and let it fill my field, like the energy around me, the energy that I swim in, that I live in, in this, uh, this uh, brine that I soak in. I want to fill it with God. And uh, this says, that's what saves the upright heart. Hmm. That's, what, that's what's going to save me from being a victim of that foxy mind. Uh, this and the upright heart, the upright heart is the heart that is, that um, that stands up inside ourselves, in, in this open, vulnerable, receptive place, uh, and uh, and the only thing that can that can s save it, meaning uh, can give it back to me, is that knowing that I'm. In the presence of God, I'm surrounded by God. I am, I am, you know that that um, that my aura, my you know, radiance, is sourced in that in in a God place within. So um, I thought we would do this in uh, in honor. Uh, you know, it's one thing to know about the foxes. And another thing is to build the power of the heart that actually gives those foxes less power over us. So, um, so when I chant this, uh, and uh, I think sometimes we've done this before, uh, I say, um, when I say, Magini Elohim, imagine that field around me the field of energy which is my radiance and my radiance uh that is uh that is the god field that i live inside of and then when i say the words Mashiach, um, that's what saves the upright heart I want to bring my attention deep inside my heart and let my heart kind of expand and unfold like a flower within me when I say those words. So I'm, so I'm kind of bringing my attention back and forth between this kind of field and this inner sense of, un, of, of grace unfolding within me, of my heart. Let's try this practice as a way of kind of building the protection yeah. that will make us less a victim of the mind. Um, Oh, 
of the field that you're in, the energy field of you, but it's not filled with your ego, it's filled with the God spark that is shining out, filling that field, giving you that protection, that sense of presence, that your own unique radiance you know, uh, the, of the God light within you. And you can feel your heart expand inside you, open. So the stronger and more radiant and more God-sourced your field is, 
the less you are a, a victim of the foxes. That's my, <clears throat> my experience, my sense. And when those foxes are very active in my vineyard, I know that I have to do some practice to build the strength of that presence. Um, and, uh, and it helps, you know. Um, so I, wa I wanted to do one more practice, which is the practice of filling up, filling up um, with the joys of that presence that's in the world and that maybe we witness, we witness God's presence in the beauty and the majesty in the justice in the, you know, the things of the world that touch us. And our um, spiritual challenge is to fill ourselves up with, with that. And, um, you know, it's like I had this conversation with my, you know, it's like with my siblings today and my, my, you know, and, and I said, oh, are, are we all celebrating? Are we all celebrating? And, you know, and my brother who didn't really, he, he maybe celebrated for a moment, but then he said, but then he got, he sort of began to say, like, all the things that, you know, are still going to go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, no, just like, how about a day? How about just like a day, you know? Uh, of like filling, of filling up. And the more that we fill up with whatever joys are there for us, the more that we can be sustained by those joys as we step into the world and meet the inevitable challenges. So, you know, so if there's a, a joy that you want to express, I'll invite you to put it in the chat, uh, um, a joy of, of this moment or something that you receive that you want to fill up with um you can you yes yes rejoining the paris agreement like mm. like i wanted that to sink in really <laughs> there's uh, and whatever you know whatever it is we grown-ups in charge absolutely the adults yes, are finally back yes, in the room and we you know it's not like it's not the same as holding on to something it's filling up with it allowing it to to really touch you. A woman VP, yes. Mm. Yes. Oi. Joy. Joy, not, not, <laughs> not oi. <oy. laughs> uh, purple. Pets yes. in the White House. Wow. Oh, they have yeah, pets? Yeah. Great. Yeah. So that full breath uh, experience. We want, just want to let it sink in, fill up oh, with that, right. because because we want to be, we want to be nurtured and 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 filled as as kind of this <clears throat> fuel going, the fuel of joy going forward. You know, anxiety is a kind of fuel also, but it is a little bit toxic. So joy being the fuel that we that we move forward with. It burns clean. It burns no clean pollution. Burns. <laughs> so I want to. Uh, this be, be our, 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 the practice that we'll do because um, it's important to know what your foxes are and it's also important to know that the, that these that these joys you know we want to sensitize us ourselves and, and fill ourselves up with these joys so sova 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 smachot and really all of it is the face the faces of God and that word face, um, you know, is in the plural, is always in the plural, you know, because the, because God has so many faces and we want to be able to take in and recognize them. And um, I think of the, you know, the joy also of the, the faces that are here. We want to take in the blessing of mm -hmm. being together. And um, so let's... Let's do this. <clears throat> and if you want to just sort of imagine those things that you're gathering them in, so you're letting them penetrate and uh, and fill you. So. so.
Of God that are here in this in the circle of circle squares, circle of squares, <laughs> filling up. Oh, yeah. mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yum, yum, yum. So uh, we thank you so much for kazooming with us. Mm -hmm. And we like to take 10 minutes to do a, a breakout, breakthrough room just to reflect on our practice and to bring it a little deeper. And uh, you know, before you, before we, we end this part of it, I, uh, I, I wanted to invite you to just to, uh, to donate through our website, mm -hmm. to um, to um, also there's a retreat that I'm going to be teaching in February with Sherry Brown called Healing Into Action, a retreat online, and uh, to check that out. I know a couple of you here are signed up for it, um, and it's a kind of a starts Monday night, ends Friday afternoon, just a, mon uh, a, a morning and an afternoon session, and Sherry Brown's an amazing teacher to collaborate with, so think about if you might um, be able to come to that. And in, and those who are so so those who are leaving, we love you. We bye. love you. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> and those who want to take just these ten minutes to to check in about your practice, um, I'm going to create these these zoom rooms for you okay <laughs> let's see let's see and i'll call you back oh mark be Marcy Ann. Hey, it's Marcy Ann. Wow, I haven't seen her in a long time. Leia and Makabina, are you here? No, maybe not. So let's see. Okay. Uh, 